Hello and welcome. I'm Juan Carlos Gamarra, Ambassador of Peru to the United Kingdom, and continuing with our cycle of bicentennial dialogues on Peruvian contemporary literature, I'm pleased to be here again with Santiago Roncayolo, who will talk to us this time about his book, Hi, this is Conchita. Santiago Roncayolo is a writer, screenwriter, translator, and journalist. He writes about fear with sharp shots of psychological suspense and black humor, both in Latin American history and in daily life. He has published in English the novel Red April, which won the Spanish Alfaguara Prize in 2006, and British The Independent Foreign Fiction Prize in 2011, as well as the short stories of Hi, This is Conchita that we will be learning about today, both crafted by the master of Spanish translation, Edith Grossman. Santiago is also author of a non-fiction novel, Memorias de una Dama, considered the last censored book of Latin America. The British literary magazine, Granta, considered him one of the best writers of his generation in Spanish, and the Wall Street Journal named him one of the next Gabriel Garcia Marquez. The Guardian called Red April one of the best novels about Peru ever translated to English. Santiago now lives in Barcelona, working as a novelist and a screenwriter. So thank you once more, Santiago, for being with us and participating in this effort by the Embassy of Peru to have the, Peru, the British public learn more about contemporary writing in Peru. Please, you have the floor. Hello, this is... Santiago Roncayolo, Peruvian writer. And I'm here to talk to you about my short story collection, Hi, This is Conchita. Uh, usually my characters, they just don't know where they belong. They, they, they feel out from any significant human contact. It's uncommunication and, and uh, isolation and, and the feeling of uh, the, of being an alien into your own society are a few of my I don't know trademarks uh, the, the things I I feel and therefore I usually write about and so hi this is Conchita has uh, three of these short stories of of people feeling like they came out from nowhere and they are still nowhere, uh, feeling no, no contact with, the, with their social environments, with, with their places. Maybe there are stories of people looking for their places, trying to find out which is their space in this planet. But uh, the longest story, which is the, the book's name, Hi, This is Conchita. It, it, it's very peculiar and uh, uh, and it's not even published in Spanish. It's a strange story because it was not written for a book. It was written 20 years ago when I was working uh, with a theater company. Well, a company is too big. I, I would say we were a bunch of losers trying to make theater because it was cheaper than making movies and uh, I was living in Madrid we we had one of these uh, desertic Saharian very hot dry summers of Madrid in August where everybody's out from the city of course my family was in Lima they still are uh, so I was alone and on all my connections were by the phone. It was 20 years ago. Internet was not what it is now. I, 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 I would talk to my girlfriend in the phone. I would talk to my family in the phone. I, I, I realized I could even have sex on the phone uh, through a hotline and uh, that many of the human interactions uh, can easily be replaced by exchanging words and, and, and this and telephone was uh, 
the perfect space to to just give and receive words and at the same time you you would have a strange intimacy talking into the ear of somebody without touching this person without seeing this person without being in the same space with this person just uh, murmuring to their ears the words you want to deliver so i thought about writing a story about this a story which is just the words people is exchanging uh, 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 a story uh, which happens in the telephonic lines just all along the conversations people are having and these stories cross to each other it's uh, very funny I, I always you I enjoy black humor because uh, I was raised with black humor it's it's um, it's a mechanism of defense against the world and the problems and but this is by far more humoristic, more comic stuff than, than what I usually write. Probably the most funny stuff I, I have written. I, I, I love the absurd situations that, that words are creating among, among these people. Um, time passed and we, we put these in, this stories in, in, in a book which was published in English, so it's a very special book. It's, uh, it's, it's the only book I have uh, in one language that is not in my original language. But at the same time, uh, like many things I do, it's a uh, uh, homenage, uh, a tribute to, the, um, to many of the British American uh, literature I read all along my life, very different than Latin American write, uh, writing, and to the popular culture, the comedy, the cinema, um, all the things that uh, made my life better and funnier and uh, more exciting uh, if if my stories can make anybody's life a bit funnier for for a while, I I'll be happy. This this story would have reached a good destiny in the end. Um, this would be a non lost phone call for somebody. Thank you. Thank you very much, Santiago, for sharing with us the, your important work and helping us to celebrate our bicentennial this year. I would also like to invite the audience to look out for your books, which are available in British bookstores. So thank you once again, and till the next podcast. Bye-bye. <laughs>